but uh, I, I, in, in health-wise and everything else, I'm over it. In Jesus' name, we need the victory. Amen. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. You're under attack, too. If you're in leadership in this church, you're probably under attack. Don't quit. Just beat him. In the name of Jesus, victory. Amen. So, praise the Lord. So, if you're ready for the word, let's get started. This is the fourth message. Uh, we kind of took a break over the Christmas, but this is the, now the fourth and final in this series on In the Spirit. Four times in the book of Revelation, John says, I was in the Spirit. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, right? I was in, I was in the Spirit uh, when, uh, in, in Babylon and, but, but now, but now he's in the spirit and he's in new Jerusalem. Ah, we're going to like this. Now I need to read a lot of scripture because I got to the end of the book of revelation and it says, he who takes away and adds to will be cursed. So I'm going to read the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I don't want to leave anything out. <laughs> scared me. I... <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to read quite a bit, but for some of you, that's the most reading you'll do all week. So anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so I, I want to go back to Revelation chapter 20 because that sets us up. Because this is the thousand-year reign, and I know there's confusion. What's the thousand-year reign? Let's, let's let Scripture speak for it, and, and let's, let's look at this in, in this final message, okay? So Revelation chapter 20, we'll read verses 1 through 15. You can follow along. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, oh, and a great chain in his hand. What a day that will be. Woo. He laid hold of the dragon. I believe around the neck, don't you? That serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. It's like, I really want you to know who we're doing it to here. And bound him for a thousand years. How many believe the Lord has power if he can bind them for a thousand years, he can get them out of your back door. Yeah. Glory. I don't know if I'll get through this or not. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him that he should, that he, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. So with no devil, everybody's, nobody sins, right? No. Quit blaming the devil. We could do it all by ourselves. But after these things, he must be re released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Whew. Everyone's not resurrected, but there are people there for the thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I believe people will still be alive at the end of the tribulation and will probably go into the thousand years as they are. Now when the thousand years have expired... Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth, on the earth and surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city. Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. 
Amen. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne. You've heard of the white throne judgment? And him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. How many are in the book of life? <laughs> God's got your story. And the dead were judged according to their works. And I said, I thought we weren't saved. I thought we weren't saved by works. We're not. This judgment, it's already decided who's going to heaven, who isn't. The great white throne judgment is about your works. So if you're saved, you'll still be judged by your works for your rewards. Okay? How many, how many know some of us are getting rewards? Come on now. Some of us are going to live in a mansion, and some of us have chicken coops, but we'll all, we'll all live somehow in heaven. Amen? <laughs> I don't know about chicken coops. And, uh, and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Your life is written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Oh, my God. Okay? So that's the thousand-year reign. After the thousand years... John sees something happening. This gets exciting. Amen? Most of us, uh, I think all of us, will probably be there during the thousand years, rule and reign over, I guess, other people that, you know, didn't, you know, we're, our, we're living a glorified body probably, right? If you've been raptured by then, uh, taken up to heaven and came back riding your white horse, amen, y'all get, y'all need take lessons. You know, all there is to catch you is a cloud, so you need to stay on that horse. And, uh, but we're, we're, we have glorified bodies. Other people do not coming out of the tribulation. But in uh, chapter uh, uh, 21 now, John sees a new heaven and a new earth. This is really great. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. How many, how many remember that scripture? He says, behold, all things are new. How many like that scripture says, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Everything about Jesus is new. Why does it have to be new? Because everything else is under the curse. There is no more curse. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there's no more sea. And the sea, this is kind of figurative. I mean, I, I guess there actually is no sea. That's what it says. But the sea has always been symbolic of turmoil and mystery and storms. The, the people are considered the sea, you know, restless. You have to understand back then and even now, nobody lives on the sea. The sea is just something you cross. The sea was always scary. Ships would often hug the coastline. They wouldn't just get out into the ocean somewhere. They'd follow coastlines. They were afraid of the sea. That, but the thing that scared them the most, he said, there is no more sea. No more uncertainty. No more storms. Woo. No more scary stuff. Then I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. Can you picture this? From God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Whew. 
Now, I thought we were the bride, not the city. But you need to understand, when he talks about the city, he's not just talking about a building or buildings. He's talking about us. We are the city. Now, it, it is buildings, I guess. It's all that. But it's, it's about us, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, his house, is with men. What kind of God moves <laughs> to live with us? And he will dwell with them, tabernacle with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. No more sorrow. There'll be no more death. Oh, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Nor sorrow nor crying. There will be no more pain. Can I get an amen? Why? For the former things have passed away. Then he who, then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. <laughs> and he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm A, I'm Z. I'm the beginning, I'm the completion. I'm the start, I'm the finish. What I started, I'll bring to an end. Woo! I will fix everything in between. Oh, that's my God. That's my God. Somebody give me an amen. Hallelujah. The beginning and the end, I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Remember what he said to the woman at the well, I've got water that, you, you want, that you'll never have to, you'll never want. Mm. There's, some, there's a river flowing. It doesn't flow out of the city. It's in the city. But it flows. And you can drink freely. How many know it's not polluted? How many believe that water's pure? Oh, Lord, help us. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, verse 14. But he who overcomes, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. Inherit. So doesn't someone have to die for us to get an inheritance? Duh. Jesus did. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Son. But the cowardly. Isn't that interesting? People who will not suffer for Christ, but give in. You're mentioned here. The unbelieving, abominable, we got those in the world, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the Second death. Now, I know some of you are thinking, okay, I'm not one of those seven. It's not a complete list. <laughs> Quit looking for loopholes. Live right. Say, I'm going to live right. Amen. 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 So then we begin in this next thing. This is in the verses, verse 9 where, where uh, John is in the spirit again for the fourth time with his new vision of the bride. So let's look at verse 9. 
Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride and for the first time, the lamb's wife. Not just a bride anymore. She's the wife. Oh, praise God. We're not just bride. If we're wife, how many know Jesus doesn't divorce? That means forever and ever and ever we have this relationship with the lamb. Wow. Wow. And he carried me away in the spirit, in the spirit, say in the spirit, to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city. Wow. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven. You know, it always gets me when people say, when I die, I'm going to heaven. Actually, you're going where Jesus is, wherever that is. And then we say, I'm going to be in heaven forever. No, you're going to be on earth forever. It's a new earth. It's a new heaven. That's interesting, too. What does new heaven mean? But this city comes out of the sky, I guess. There's no more sea. I, I don't know what this, what, what, you know, the, I get, they said there's no need of sun and moon. I, I assume that means there's not any. So God has to work a miracle there because the earth cannot exist without sun. It'd be different without the moon. None of that's necessary. All you need is Jesus. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I don't know about the other stars and planets. I hope I'm, I hope I can get in my little mobile thing and Go visit Mars and different. Okay. Having the glory on my white horse. <laughs> Having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone. I, I want to describe this. Like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates, and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, three on the west, right? Next verse. Now, the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city is laid out as a square. Actually, it's a cube. It's a cube. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, breadth, and height are equal. Now, furlong, this is, uh, uh, some of your versions say a stadia. Uh, this is about 1,500 miles. 1,500 miles one way, 1,500 miles the other way, and 1,500 miles high. This city would stretch from New York City to Houston, Texas, and from Canada to the Florida Keys. Come on now. That's a city. It puts Babylon to shame. <laughs> Anyway, it'll take us a while. It'll take a couple thousand years to investigate that city. And it has a river running through it, and it's got the tree of life on either side of the river. I, I, I kind of think that tree of life is what Adam had in the garden. Right? And God had to get him out of the garden before he ate from it, after he sinned. Why? Because if he had eaten from the tree of life after he had sinned, he would have lived forever in his sin. It was God's mercy to let him die. Wow. But now we're forgiven. Now we're glorified. Now we've got the new spiritual body. Now we can eat from the tree of life. Twelve fruits every month, a different fruit. Wow. What a tree. What a tree that will be when, <laughs> when my apple I will free. Well, no, I didn't practice that. That's just right. <laughs> 
So he measured the walls 140 cubits according to the measure of a man. In other words, there were the, the walls of this thing were really wide. About there were about 200 200 feet, uh, about about 70 yards. Now a football field is 100 yards, 70 yards th- thick across. You understand? I'm having trouble with my arm. It was thick. <laughs> You can put a lot of chariots across that thing, okay? So I don't know why it's so thick, but there it is. All right? And uh, the construction of the wall was jasper. The city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundation of the walls were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. Next was sapphire, uh, uh, chalcedony, whatever that is, emerald, sard- sardonyx, uh, sardius, uh, all these precious jewels. Next verse. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Where did they find that oyster? Wow. Each individual gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. Why does God pave the streets with gold? Because gold's the cheapest thing up there. I know some of you will be up there stealing bricks. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. There's plenty of gold up there. You don't have to get you a little. (laughs) It's interesting that there's no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Ah, glory to God. The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine. For the glory of God illuminated, the Lamb is its light. 1,500 miles. Wow. Wow. Can you imagine the elevator in that place? I don't guess we need elevators. All right. Is there another verse? Was that it? That's it. Okay. Isn't that, isn't that a powerful sight? That's where we live. That's where we live. And now it's for all eternity. And by the way, your status in that city depends on your works here now. Remember that scripture that says that you're going to go through the fire. And whatever works you do that you got credit for or you took credit for or you did with the wrong reason or the wrong motives, they get burned up. But when you do something for Jesus or someone else unselfishly, those works go with you. Think of it this way. You have a bank in heaven And some of us aren't making many deposits. So when you get there, (laughs) your status, how many know there there is? Yeah. There are rewards. You're going to be kings and priests and princesses and queens. We're, We're... where where there's there's some kind of rank there's something there there are big houses and little houses i guess there are rewards in heaven and and you you live here for a short time believe me it's short and for some of you it's going to be real short i i thought about not even saying this I, it's I, but I remember when I was first saved, and, and we believed in the rapture. And I kept thinking, in my 20s, when I first got saved, I thought, oh, if the Lord comes now, I'll never live very long. I lived a long time. But how many know we're in the last? Some of you young folk may not see my age. And I don't know. I don't think if you live to be a hundred and you die, I don't think you're a hundred years old in heaven. I don't think you're walking around for all eternity 
with a walker. Uh, right? I, I don't know what we'll look like. I think we'll be at our, maybe you get to pick your age. I want to be 25 again with the wisdom of a 90-year-old. Amen. Wouldn't that be great? Whew, hallelujah. It's sad that so many of us have to live so long. We know how to do things now. We're just too old to do them. You know, that's just... Isn't that sad? <laughs> Jesus, help us. So I, I, you know, I don't know about all that, but I just know we're going to have perfect health, no pain, and we will be there with him living. Isn't this strange? His, his whole goal, his whole goal was to live with us. Now, I don't know why. It doesn't make sense to me. God is God. He said, well, he, God was lonely. No, God isn't lonely. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's one of the proofs of the Trinity. God was not alone. God exists as three persons. But he wanted to share that with us. It doesn't come out of a weakness. It doesn't come out of a fault. It doesn't come out of a need. It comes out of his love. I just want to share this love. You know, living forever kind of blows your mind. But thinking that God existed forever, that really blows my mind. Because at what point <laughs> did he say, let's start? When you live forever. I just came by to confuse you this morning. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you live forever, how do you, when, when do, how do you start time? You know, it's like, oh, this, he, Father said to the son, oh, this is a clock. We're going to wind this up. For, and we're going to set it for 6,000 years, 7,000 years. And when it's done, it's done. And we go back to eternity. Come on. Praise God. And that's why the earth is not millions of years old. It's only 6,000 years old. Ah, uh, you're anti-science. No, science is anti-God. The proof is there, but they can't accept it. They can't, they just ignore it. Anything that, that contradicts their conception of things, they just say, well, we'll explain that later. We'll push it over here. You know, the other day, I, I, I'll just get, can I give you one? They found, they dug up old dinosaur bones. Guess what they found in the bones? They found soft tissue. Wait a minute. It was buried rapidly, yeah. But you can't, a soft tissue is not going to last millions of years. It's a miracle it lasted 4,500 years. It was probably buried in the flood. How it lasted that long, they can't explain. But how do you have a dinosaur with soft tissue? I mean, right there. So they just go, well, I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> we'll let someone else explain that. that that's just one thing. I, I give you a whole list of things that, that uh, evolution has major problems. It takes a lot more faith to believe in evolution. That just random chances occurred and we went from a single cell, which a single cell cannot exist by itself. It has to have other cells for it to exist. So lightning hit a mud puddle, and, and a single cell went, boom, here I am. A single cell living outside of any other cell, and it divides, and now, ta-da, there's two of me. <laughs> and it kept dividing and growing, and it's not possible. 
Let me tell you what the odds are of something greater. Let's say you go to a, uh, an airplane boneyard where all the, pl- these are old planes, they're all, they're all wrecked, they're all torn apart, they, all the pieces are disassembled, and a, and a tornado goes through. And as the tornado goes through, by chance, it takes all the right parts and creates an airplane. The odds of that happening are more likely than the odds of evolution happening. And yet, they have great faith to believe that nonsense. And it is nonsense. God made the heavens and the earth. Give him praise. Amen. And he made us. You're no monkey. Fist bump somebody and say, you know, you're no monkey. <laughs> we just act like it sometimes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So there's a river and, there, and there's the tree on both sides. We get to eat from it. I believe that tree, I don't know how it works, but it gives life. The water gives life, eternal life. I I assume we eat of it regularly. Why not? Different fruit every month, that tells me, you know, there's a variety diet in heaven. And we eat of it all the days of eternity. Revelation 22, I'm almost done, verse 1. Revelation 22 and verse 1, the last chapter of the last book. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life. I guess it's one tree coming up on both sides, which bore 12 fruit, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. All right, keep your curse. Can I get an amen? Amen. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. For all eternity. But he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come. I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his what? According to his work. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immortal murderers. And don't ask me to explain that. There's people outside the gates? I don't know. I don't know about that. Maybe, do you think maybe we, we still have a choice to live right or not? I just came by to confuse you. I don't know, I don't know who these people are. Or, or, or maybe it's just figuratively speaking that they're outside. They're in the lake of fire. I, I don't get it, but... I do know this. I don't believe we're ever robots. Even angels had a choice. Of course, if I'm living in that city and I have my mansion or my chicken coop and and I'm eating from the tree of life and the river of life and I see pearls, a gate, pearls <laughs> as big as that beam... Uh, I think I'm going to live right. No devil. 
But anyway, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you of those things in the churches. I, I've sent my angel to testify to Journey Life Center. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Old Testament references, my God. And the spirit and the bride <coughs> say, come and let him who hears say, and let him who thirsts, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. A couple more verses. Still with me? And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophet, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Wow. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I can sum up all four of these messages. I sum up the whole book of Revelation very, very, in just a couple words. And that's this. All of worship in the last days is based on the belief that he's coming back. All worship. If he's not coming back, why are we worshiping? It's all a lie. How many know he's coming back? <laughs> Maybe this afternoon. I don't know. Don't know how it works. I've told you a hundred times. I don't know when the rapture is. I just know I'm on the first bus. <laughs> if there's one, if there's three, if it's first, if it's middle, if it's end, whatever, it, if we go through the trip, whatever it is, believe whatever you want to believe. I'm not telling you what to believe. I don't care what you believe. Doesn't matter what you believe. But but don't have the false hope that well I won't be persecuted. People are dying today. And we are not excused from judgment. I don't care what you say. So I don't know when it happens. Don't care when it happens. All I know is he's coming back. Antichrist is going to pretend it's him. Anti doesn't just mean against Christ. It means another Christ. It means the opposite of Christ. And everything Christ wants to do and be, to have a temple, to work miracles, to call fire down from heaven, to heal people, to have prophets, all that stuff the Antichrist will have. How are the nations, how are Christians deceived? They think Antichrist is Christ. He's in the temple. Don't get confused. You need to know who Christ is. And that's why the last book in the Bible is called the Revelation. Not of the last days. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It reveals him. It's not important that you know the times and seasons. What's important is that you know him. If you know him, you'll never be deceived. If you know him, you'll make it. If you believe he's coming back, you'll be okay. Stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming.